Guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So fantastic news, we can now use Pandora on your A500 Mini. Now as you know, or maybe not, that this was actually disabled on the latest firmware update and you couldn't actually use it. But now we can, there's been an update and we can now actually use Pandora 500 and be able to play other stuff other than Amiga games such as Arcade, Playstation, Dreamcast. Without further ado guys, let's get started. Okay guys, so what is Pandora as it said there? It's basically RetroArch, allowing you the ability to play a lot of other different style games from Dreamcast, PSP, Commodore 64, NES for example. Um, and it's basically, it's pretty simple, you just need to download the file that's on this site. Um, and there's a lot of details, I'll leave the link in the description, you can go through this. There's a lot of information here. They've added a few things to version uh, 1.2, which is quite cool. Um, and I'm just really glad that we now have the ability to be able to play this because it really was a bit unfair um, that Retro Games removed that ability to use Pandora um, after you updated your firmware. Um, but now we've got it. Absolutely fantastic. I'm delighted. It's not the reason why I bought an A500 Mini to be honest, but it's still good to have that ability and choice um, there if you want to. Um, so obviously all you need to do is download this uh, file here. Um, and put it onto your USB stick. You've probably already got a USB stick that you use for your your own uh, games for your A500 Mini. It's basically just add it to there. You will have to add probably BIOS files and your own ROMs. It tells you the files to actually use. Here's the, the folder. Add the ROMs here. You'll see a list of all the different formats. Just add your ROMs in there as you will. And same BIOS files. This is quite important. Some of the um, sort of formats that you play will probably need BIOS files, there's some more information about that here if you want. Um, and there's a little bit more information here, pretty cool. But yeah, so what you need to do is very, very simple, just download the latest zip file from that part there. It downloads only takes about a minute and then put it onto your USB stick and you are good to go. Obviously you need to do the setup before you actually get started. You can see there was obviously some files already included um, but you obviously want to go and probably start by downloading your own ROMs onto the USB stick and take it from there. Anyway without further ado let's get back to it and sort of go through some of the game formats and see how it actually performs. Okay guys, once you've actually downloaded Pandora, you just need to unzip it and put it onto your USB card and you should have a folder pretty much like this. Um, and then all you need to do is add your ROMs, you can see the ROMs folder there. You've got all the individual sort of folders. Now all of these will probably need sort of certain file types as, as per usual. If we're going to Commodore 64, it'll probably take the, all the sort of .t64, d64 etc. Um, Obviously Commodore Omega you can add in here. I've, I've just added in them all, like ADF files, CD32 files onto there, just to test them out basically. Um, Thomas Wave, add your files in here as fourth. Um, MAME, just got a zip file in there. Um, obviously sometimes if you're not really sure what you're doing here, sometimes you have to have them in zip files, sometimes they need to be out with the zip files, it really just varies. Um, I've got loads of arcade uh, games added just to test them out um, and you can see all the options that you've got here to add Nintendo 64 now I've got uh, different types here that, that sort of picked up .z64, .zip, it didn't matter they both picked up so it really does vary depending on um, what sort of um, console or game format you're actually playing Sega Dreamcast, this is a .cdi option um, PlayStation Portable. I've had a little bit of a problem trying to play this one, so may need to have a look at that. Might be a problem with Pandora rather than the actual file, because this file plays okay. And that's really it. Oh, the other thing is probably the uh, BIOS you need to put in here. So, config, flycast, so you want to put, make sure all your Dreamcast and maybe a Thomas Wave sort of BIOS files are all in this folder here. Um, although I did get an option when I actually tried to play a Thomas Wave, it was actually telling me that the folder was here, just in case this happens to you. It was in local, share, 
and there's a folder in here flycast as well so i've dropped them in here as well because that's that's what the warning was giving me when i was trying to play um dolphin blue for example and um, which we'll see later in the video and um, so I've, I've put them in both places just to be sure but yeah if you've got your bias uh, sort of files you need to drop them all um into this folder here retroarch config no nope, sorry back a bit system retroarch system and then drop all your bios files in here if you've got any so if you've got any sort of handheld retro emulation devices you should maybe have some of these um already you can really just copy them from other things that you've purchased and just drop them in here um, there's some guides on the internet you can probably try and find if you're not really sure what you're doing but basically all your bios files goes in this folder here for all the different um sort of formats that you have obviously you don't need to do that for amiga because they should just automatically pull as soon as you start playing amiga games in pandori okay guys so once we get to this stage you are now good to go and start playing and um, but before we start to refresh the sort of playlists and game lists i'll show you what you will see um, by default and um, there's a lot of things already included for you some games um, some music files and videos for example and um, this is basically just a fancier version of um, RetroArch, that's really all it is um, and if you've ever used RetroArch before you'll be quite at home if you've not it's no big deal you can really just follow this and play the games there's a few sort of titles here already included which is quite cool um, Doom, there's even Quake included there's a few sort of arcade games there's some videos there's a Turbo Graphics stuff um, Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64 NES, Super Nintendo, and there's the Quake, this works fantastic, there's Scum B, uh, 32x game, um, now there's some obviously gaps, you'll need to add your own ROMs to Dreamcast and other things like that, um, and you should be good to go, but yeah without further ado guys, what I'll do first now is show you how to actually set up your playlists. Okay guys, so the first thing that we want to do is actually um, set up and refresh your playlist, once you've actually dropped ROMs, um, you need to sort of refresh this and add, scan the directory. So I'll go down to the ROM folder. Um, so here we go, Pandora, ROMs, scan this directory. So basically we'll just try to scan all the new sort of files that we've added. So this might take a few minutes to actually do. So once you press that, it'll start looking through all the folders, all the files that you've added. Again, this might take a good, maybe five minutes or so. It might take less time, it depends how many files you've actually added. Okay, now that that's actually complete, we now need to actually refresh the actual playlist so the, the games actually show up uh, on the lists here. Um, if you don't do this, they will not actually show up. Now, I'm not sure if there's actually a quick way of doing that. I couldn't actually see it without actually doing it individually per, um, per, per format, which was a little bit of a pain. So what we need to do is if you go down to settings here and playlists um, manage playlists and you basically need to go through each of these and refresh them um, there really should be an option at the top here to reflect like refresh all i'm not really sure where it is or what's happened to it but basically it's not there so for example if we went into commodore 64 uh, and you scroll down um, refresh playlists and just press that it basically then refreshes your playlist and you will see all your games um, listed rather than nothing at all. If you don't do that they will not appear which is a bit of a pain. Again not sure there might be a quicker way of doing that. Um, you need to do that for every sort of format which is a little bit of a pain. Um, there may be a quicker way as I say but um, not entirely sure. So what we'll do is we'll go straight over and we'll maybe start and play some games to start with and we'll probably start with Dolphin Blue which is um, a Thomas Wave. Okay just press the A button to start and run. You can also mess about and set this the core association, but I wouldn't mess about with any of that. Just press run, it should automatically start. And as you can see running in the background is the sort of emulator that they've used here. Basically you press the, the home button as your start button here. Now 
this is kind of a like a metal slug style game and I have to say um, I've seen this run in, in a lot of different sort of emulators in the last sort of year or so and this one is probably the best I've ever seen this run and no kidding you I'm not saying everything's going to run perfect on the 500 mini and I know for a fact it doesn't but this particular game is the best I've ever seen it run which is unbelievable and it's a great little game too it's such fun <laughs> absolute blast again if you like mere metal slug games you will absolutely love this game it's absolutely brilliant and yeah for me this is probably the best I've ever seen this game run on an emulation device that is anyway absolutely brilliant it's absolute mayhem anyway so to exit the game you need to press the menu and home button together and for most formats sometimes it might be a little bit different um, for instance if you want to actually access um, the sort of settings here you can just press the menu button and then you can sort of access some of the different settings in the background um, I'm not sure you'd want to be messing about with all this stuff right enough but there's options there if you if things aren't maybe working as they actually should um, but yeah maybe be wise not to mess about with this too much so Thomas Wave you want to actually um, exit just go down to the bottom after you press menu just press exit it will automatically go back for most of them right enough you just press menu and home to exit back to Pandora as you can see here so it's B button to go back and A to confirm um, on these menus here. So this is Commodore 64. What we'll do is start one of the games um, and it runs particularly quickly, which is quite impressive. So this is Empire Strikes Back, which is a fairly recent um, sort of reworking of an old game um, on the Commodore 64. And it's downloadable free on itch.io if anyone's actually interested. It's actually really good fun. It's a pretty much simple shooter. Um, Side scrolling to you just need to take out these at ats or AT, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> and the walkers. Um, and that's it. There's three of them to start on this first stage. Um, you obviously need to avoid getting hit yourself. It's just easier said than done. Not particularly great at this style of game, but this game is really quite cool um, for Commodore 64. I really recommend it. And again, it's completely free on itch.io if you're interested. Okay, I've also added a few sort of Amiga games here, which we'll sort of quickly test. It's like one of those amazing Amiga games I've always loved. Obviously, I had a sort of soft spot for the Commodore 64 version, funny enough, but the Amiga version is clearly superior. Oh. <laughs> I love this game, though. It's absolutely fantastic. Again, to sort of exit, you need to hold down menu and home at the same time. And it should automatically reset back. Again, you can access that keyboard. And that's the sort of Amiga keyboard by pressing the menu button, interestingly enough. Let's have a look at Doom. This is particularly impressive. Absolutely fantastic. I've seen Doom running on this system before and it was running really well, as you can see here. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's actually working all right, even on the, the sort of D-pad um, or the A500 mini controller. It seems to be okay. Probably not the best way of playing it, to be honest with you, but it's working fine. It's the Y button to shoot, and it's the B button to open doors, so pretty straightforward. Again, I don't think this controller is the greatest, but it, it's, it's functional. This is absolutely fantastic working. Again, it's good to have the option to play all these different games other than Amiga. I mean, it's not why I bought a Mini, to be honest, but it's nice to have that, and it's very easy to set up. It doesn't take a lot of memory, um, unless you add loads of ROMs, that is, but very simple. It's good to have that option, and I guess I'll be thinking twice about updating my firmware in future. Okay, so this is a sort of DOS sort of games here there's quite a list which is quite cool some Duke Nukem now I did have issues I did play Duke Nukem 1 and it kind of a crashed the A500 Mini but I wasn't sure how to actually exit the game so a little bit of an issue there let's actually try Duke Nukem 3 instead
So again, it's not totally clear how to sort of restart um, and without actually resetting the whole A500 Mini, it wasn't clear how to exit these games. Pressing menu and home wasn't actually working. Again, so I tried that and you can see I can't actually control. Nothing is working. And yeah, I can't actually exit the game either. I'm not sure if there's a shortcut on the keyboard or anything, but yeah, not ideal. The DOS games have got a little bit of an issue, I would say. Okay guys, so I've had to sort of reset the 500 Mini, so maybe for now you might want to avoid the DOS games. I did actually get to play the Duke Nukem 1, um, but all I couldn't actually reset. I don't know how to actually reset if you're playing the DOS games, but there's a few issues. Even with a keyboard and mouse, Duke Nukem 3D wasn't actually working, so not sure what the issue is there. Yeah, let's uh, jump into an uh, arcade game and um, see how that actually performs. Hopefully that'll be okay. Insert coin, here we go. So it's the menu button to insert coin and then just home button to start. They seem to be working really well. Buttons seem to have mapped okay as well. Bit of jump and shoot. <laughs> kind of crazy, fun little game. Oops. Yeah, that seems to be actually working quite well. So to skip these, you just menu and home, and it should take you automatically back. That's how it should work for most of them. Um, so arcade is fine. Let's have a look at MAME um, and Final Fight Run and see how it actually performs. Definitely one of my all-time favourite side-scrolling beat-em-ups uh, arcade. Absolutely amazing. Love this. Spent many a ten pence on this. Absolutely fantastic. It seems to be performing really well. It is really good that we can play some of these games on your mini. You can maybe try and set it up as your ultimate sort of games machine. Probably going to fall short on a few things, I think. But I think if this is one of your main machines and you can add extra sort of things like this to it, it's absolutely brilliant. It's definitely the, the only mini machine I've probably played in the last sort of year. I've put the rest of them back in the boxes. This is the one that's probably stayed out the box, to be honest. Uh, and that speaks wonders for the 500 mini. Not perfect, but. I've really enjoyed having it. Okay, so there are some music files here and even videos, but again, I couldn't actually exit them, so I'm not going to play through them. Um, but they are there if you are interested in having a look at them. Um, we've got some PC Engine stuff. Let's have a bash at that. Let's play Outrun. Again, obviously the Amiga version of Outrun is not particularly great, but um, we've got this option. You can obviously get the arcade version, but I quite like this version. It is really good. Outrun is good fun, and this is definitely a really decent version of Outrun. Not saying I'm particularly great at it, but I really like the PC Engine version. Ooh. Don't crash. Okay, crash then. Okay, we can maybe try some uh, Game Boy Advance stuff now. Let's try, will we try Sonic? Now, again, I guess Game Boy Advance uh, probably won't look particularly great. Um, graphically, probably a little bit blocky. It's not really meant to be played on a big screen. I didn't realise there were so many versions of Sonic Advance, to be honest. I did play the first one and finish it, but I don't remember um, the sequels, and there's clearly been quite a few. I'm not really sure you would maybe want to play these versions over maybe the sort of Mega Drive versions of Sonic or maybe some others, but it's there if you want them.
I'm not sure that this, the scrolling's a little bit sort of jerky here and there for it, but I'm not sure if this is the way it's been emulated or that's just how it performed, I don't remember that. Got some Game Boy Color here as well, and also original Game Boy, we'll maybe have a quick bash at uh, Super Mario Land. Um, and see this running on your A500 Mini. I do love the sort of side bezels on this, it's absolutely brilliant. And it just looks like you're playing on a Game Boy. <laughs> this is pretty cool to be fair. <laughs> yeah, amazingly I did have this on the Game Boy back in the day. Okay, so this is where I start to get some more issues, um, Nintendo 64, um, they seem to run okay but I don't think it's really meant for the A500 mini controller, so this is probably where you really ideally need to seek out another controller to use, um, I couldn't actually get the buttons to map, I'm not really entirely sure, need to do a little bit of digging to be honest, but if we have a look you can see um, Super Mario, so at least the menu starting up and it seems, <laughs> seems alright from there. But, you know, not, I couldn't actually control anything, which was a bit of a pain. Me, Mario. But it does actually initially load. Again, I'm not sure all these games will work. Some of them I'm sure you'll have issues with. Um, but usually if there's any issues, you usually will see it on the screen. But at this point, I can't move the hand. And I've changed some of the options in the controller settings, and I couldn't actually figure out what to do. Might be the A500 Mini controller, because obviously if you know what the... The original N64 controller looked like, it's nothing like a 500 mini controller. We need a few different uh, analog sticks for example. But I'll maybe test this in a future video and see if we can get it working um, and see what it actually performs like. So guys, also jump on trying Cruising USA, it's the same issue, um, I can't actually get the game to control. It's just basically the button mapping that we need to sort of sort out, it could be something simple. Um, but as you can hear, it's probably not running perfectly, it seems okay, there's obviously a little bit of juddering and sort of frame issues there, but I've obviously seen this play a lot, lot worse to be fair. Usually your issues is when you get to the, I can obviously press the buttons to get to a certain screen, but I can't actually um, choose the accelerator. Um, I don't know what it's mapped to, but you probably have to spend some time remapping all the buttons, I guess, to try and get it to work. You can see some of the buttons obviously I have have mapped, well, that's the camera. You can see the brakes are working okay, but none of the buttons, the accelerations for example, are working. But you can see it is, the frame rates are probably very low as you can probably see there, so probably not ideal and I doubt it will play every game. Okay guys, so we'll move on to um, NES, I'm pretty sure this will be absolutely fine. Shouldn't uh, have any issues with this, which obviously gives you access to a, a massive catalogue of games. This is a fairly recent one called Flea from Low Tech Games, absolutely brilliant little game. Obviously first experience this on the Evercade, um, but you can actually um, download this, um, you obviously have to pay for it, but it's it's a great little game. I've probably bought this and used it in pretty much every device that I've bought, it's so addictive. Pretty hard, pretty frustrating, but it's got that very addictive one more try gameplay, which is brilliant. Um, and you've got plenty of life, so it's not really a big issue. If you've never heard of it, never played it, give it a bash, it's absolutely brilliant. Okay guys, on to Super Nintendo, this should work absolutely fine. Let's have a bash at Super Turricane on the Super Nintendo, or SNES. SNES, however you want to pronounce it. Obviously we've got the Amiga, got all the uh, original versions of Turrican on the Amiga. Yeah, but there was a few decent versions on some of the other consoles. Hard to say which one is the best, I'm not going to even try. But there's some really decent versions out there. I think this has actually been released on this, the Nintendo Switch recently, um, as a package. I mean, it's actually alright, it's not bad at all. <laughs> I 
got to love Turkey, absolute classic game. It's got everything that you possibly could want. Okay, we've also got a version of Quake, and this is particularly impressive, guys. This is really good, and it's running amazingly well. Let's get started quickly. Now, again, this has obviously been re-released recently as well um, on consoles, um, and it, it's oh, it's brilliant! What a game, very addictive. Not sure the D-pad's great for this, to be fair. Uh, it's not terrible, but um, it's not perfect either. I think you'll probably have some issues um, later in the game if you want to try and be qu quick and accurate, which is, is obviously going to be a problem. But this is looking particularly good, though. I think this is running on your A500 Mini, that's really impressive. Oh, I'm getting it, bear dog. <laughs> Could probably sit and play this one all day, absolutely brilliant. Not that I'm good at it, obviously. Okay, and we've also got the Scumvy version of Beneath a Steel Sky, um, which is probably the best version, to be fair, of Beneath a Steel Sky. It's got that amazing sort of intro. The old man was trying to tell the future, looking for pictures in the campfire. Oh, I see evil, evil. Um, you can actually use the mouse here as well. Um, you obviously access what you need. You can just use the, the D-pad. It seems to work absolutely fine. Yeah, this is probably the best way to play this game, um, to be honest with you. Try to utilise the mouse as well while I'm playing here. <laughs> Bit tricky. Okay guys, so there's Sega 32X games here, not really going to play that one. Soul Calibur Dreamcaster, this is quite interesting, playing real Dreamcast games. Let's have a bash and see how it performs. Okay, now I'm not sure this is performing particularly perfectly, you can see the frame rate's all about down, but you can see there's obviously issues there with the graphics. I've seen this before on some emulators, and I've never been able to actually solve it, I'm not sure what it is. It could be the emulator itself that it's using. And um, that it's really not up to scratch. Um, but the game actually performs alright. The frame rates are okay and it's very playable. It's just obviously got that really annoying flickering um, sort of polygons on the background there, which is a little bit off putting. Uh, see the frame rates maybe hovering about 45, 46, but it, it plays absolutely fine. If you can sort of put up with the flickering in the background, then you'll be fine. But it is a bit annoying. I tried to fix it and choosing different options in the background, but couldn't get it to fix but the games you probably have some mixture of some games playing okay and some not so but this one it's it's all right it's not bad the actual gameplay itself is is fine okay guys you've obviously got the option here you can have played game gear master system and mega drive not really added any or played them they, i tried old towers and it plays absolutely fine as you'd expect um, there's also PlayStation Portable, unfortunately I couldn't get them to run, I've got a couple of games here, it doesn't really matter what I do if you try to run it, um, it doesn't do anything, it just really jumps back. Uh, so not entirely sure what the problem is there, obviously something that needs fixed, I tried to sort of set the core but there only is one option, um, there's nothing else you can do. So definitely something need worked on there, I'm not sure whether it's something to do with my sort of ROMs. Um, but these ROMs work fine on other systems. Um, let's have a look at PlayStation and Crash Bandicoot 2. Again, these games need to be in bin and queue format. I had different formats in PlayStation games and they didn't find them. So bin and queue for PlayStation. 
Okay, here we go with PlayStation games and Crash Bandicoot. It's absolutely running fine, no problems at all. So guys, you can see Crash Bandicoot is running really well, playing fine, no problems. I'd expect most PlayStation games to run absolutely fine and shouldn't really have any massive issues. You will probably have some issues if you try to use the A500 Mini Controller, obviously, um, and some games that need the dual analog sticks, um, but that won't be the early sort of titles, I guess. Um, but apart from that, it seems to be absolutely fine. There's a few teething issues. You can see um, Dreamcast, PSP and N64, that's sort of higher end stuff. You'll probably have some issues playing some games. Um, so just be wary of that. Anything else, then I think you'll probably be absolutely fine. Um, obviously there's some teething issues here and there that needs a little bit of fixing. Um, but that's a good start. It's great that we can now have access to Pandora. Um, obviously, Retro Games took that access away in their latest firmware update, but now we've found a way around it and we can actually play it, and I'm really delighted. Um, it's not why I bought uh, an A500 Mini, but I think it's good to have that option. I think everyone should have that option to play these games, if they so desire, um, and it's really good. I'm really delighted. Hopefully we'll see some more updates from Pandora, because obviously it does need a little bit of tweaking here and there, but that's a good start. I'm really pleased. Guys, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.